excitement in the beginning, I forgot to introduce myself. So, <laughs> I'm Michelle Sudiha, Executive Director of CAPE, the Coalition of Asian Pacifics and Entertainment. <laughs> yeah, we have a wonderful 2018, and I'm so excited for 2019 for shows like this that really are taking representation seriously and behind and in front of the camera. So please give it up again for Freeform. One of our fellowships is our Cape New Writers Fellowship. The deadline is coming up on Sunday, on the 7th, that's Monday. So if you have any writers in the audience, I hope you are polishing that off and then submitting. One of our writers actually wrote on this show, Lauren Moon, and um, we're very, very proud of her for that. And then, um, so I'd like to introduce our fabulous moderator tonight, Filiana Ng from Entertainment Tonight. Can we please give it up for Phil? <laughs> also please tag CAPE at CAPE USA and its IG is CAPE underscore USA. Thank you. Thanks, you know. um, Yeah, thanks so much for hanging it out on a Friday night. I know it's kind of difficult. And, uh, but yeah, I think you guys all enjoyed the first episode, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially that ending, that final scene was so <laughs> um, well, I'm going to introduce the panelists. Um, first, we have the co-creator, Bradley um, Bredaway. Yeah. Um, next, we have Sherry Cola, who plays Alice. Yeah. Um, next, we have Ken Kirby, who plays Ben. Yeah, with not like you know we we watch it obviously with our casting crew and, and and those likes, but with a with a crowd like this, it's our first time. What did you think? I mean, it was was it like you know an interesting experience, like watching people reacting to this episode? What did you think of, of everyone's reaction here? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've seen by this point, I've seen it probably 150 times because you know <laughs> part of our job is to just really you know cut the hell out of it, and so. It was. It's always refreshing to get into a room and watch it with with a group of people, but especially with um, brand new faces. So it was so fun and thrilling for us. So thank you. Yeah, definitely the parts that you know you laughed at, I appreciated, and uh, <laughs> even the parts that were sad or suspenseful. You know, you guys were reacting. So you, you give it up to you guys for being an amazing audience. Um, and this is John M. Chu's TV directorial debut, so it's, it was very exciting, so I'm excited that you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, I, it was my first time watching it, same as you guys, so I was stuck up in Canada, uh, and I missed the first view and choose, so, you know, I'm just with you guys, and I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed it, Bradley. It was great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sort of echoing off what Bradley was saying, um, just like... Being with the cast together all the time, and we, you know, we get to know each other so well, and having a personal connection with these people you see on screen, and seeing the project come to life after all of this, it's it's a really emotional experience, and it's um, we're so glad you guys liked it. Hopefully, we did it, you guys. We did it. Yeah. And, like honestly, it gets so much deeper and juicier, especially when Sumi comes in. We're probably going to end up spoiling that later. Huh? I know. Let's try not to. Okay. Uh, I mean, these two, over the course of the entire first season, it is uh, special. I was about to say my favorite storyline, but I don't want to pick favorites. Because you're not supposed to pick Everybody favorite get children. that on video. I know. It's yeah. Yeah. Everybody got that. So I will say it's one of my favorites, and it's so special. And the two of them together are so um, incredible. Um, well, let's go back to the beginning a little bit, um, to the origin of the show. When did you know that The Fosters was ending, and when did you first, you know, think that this was going to be a great idea for a spinoff? One that, like, a found family? And, and um, the crazy thing is, it was around this time last year that we found out um, that The Fosters, after five seasons and 104 episodes, that we were going to be wrapping that up. 
Um, and so it took us a second to take that in because that was always such an important sort of milestone stone in all of our careers and we built such an important family on that show. But then basically in the same breath that the network said, we're wrapping up the Fosters, but we want a spinoff. <laughs> we then had to say, let us just take a beat and really decide if that's the right direction for us to go in. And after Peter, Joanna, and I got into a room and really talked about it, um, we just weren't ready to give up this world and these kinds of stories. Because especially right now, with everything going on in the world, there are very few opportunities that we have to really tell these kinds of stories right now. And so we just couldn't give it up. So we went all in and we ended up building a new family and, you know, much like The Fosters, I feel like Good Trouble is a very inclusive show. I feel like it's like one of the most inclusive uh, shows on TV right now with its casting. So I'm just kind of curious, the casting process, you know, did you set out to kind of continue that Fosters in, in creating characters and, and finding the right people for the part? Yeah, I mean, it's for so long, TV did not represent our world. And, and the many cultures that we find ourselves surrounded by, especially in downtown Los Angeles, we really had to look at what that world was made up of. And it is some of the most beautiful faces on the planet, you know? And so we really wanted to make sure that we, we represented our city properly. And so we took the time to really talk about each character and their culture and their backgrounds and their families and what did that look like to us. And that's how we built the family that you guys saw on screen today. Um, and specifically speaking to the characters of Alice and Ben and Sumi, were they specifically written to be Asian? Um, what was that process like for you? They were, because again, we, we, we really do talk about you know, our, our cultures and, our, and, and the character backgrounds. We're always open to surprises in the, in the casting process. That sometimes happens, but we are very specific about the makeup of a very character. So we were looking for a Sherry. <laughs> Um, when we set out for Alice, and we had... <laughs> and, you know, it was one of those characters that was, it was so important to us to find the right actor for it, and the moment she stepped in the room, we knew she was Alice. We just knew it. So... I mean, it means a lot for you to say that because I, right when I read the, the breakdown, you know, um, it was, uh, you know, a, an Asian, first generation Asian American uh, who's not out to her parents. And uh, that story is so special because I personally never saw that when I was growing up, you know, and like to, to have that on the screen, whether you're Asian or you're a lesbian or, you know, I know that so many people will relate to Alice, you know, just because, as you can see, she's not out to her parents. Um, and yeah, truthfully, I didn't, I don't know of a story uh, like Alice right now. I mean, it's top of my head. Yeah, and you know, I was about to say, pilots are really hard. They're really hard to make. And you ha we had a lot of characters to introduce in that first episode. But I will say that Alice really quickly becomes the heartbeat of the show. You know, she really is sort of the host of the coterie. You know, and so she is the mother hen. She becomes everyone's best friend. And so I cannot wait for you guys to see the 13 episodes that are, that are in front of us, or the 12 after this one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we definitely do get deeper in everything that Alice deals with, you know, um, intertwined with Sumi. We're not gonna spoil it, but the point is, uh, is there, and, and in terms of tapping into the culture, something really amazing that uh, they wrote in was this dinner scene with me, Kara, and my, parents, my TV parents, and we're speaking Mandarin, so there's going to be subtitles, and it's, yeah, I it remember, really special. I remember when that happened on set, because me and Sherry were both Chinese, and we just always are joking on set, and we were talking to each other in Mandarin, and I remember Peter came up and was like, wait, what, whoa, what's happening? Do you guys, you guys both, you, you're Chinese, you both speak Chinese, what's happening? You guys both speak Chinese? We're like, yeah, we both speak Chinese, and before we knew it, like the next episode, Oh my god, there's a whole scene in Mandarin, you know, that they wrote in for us to reflect our culture, our story. And it really is a testament to our showrunners, our creators, our incredible writers room, like to be able to, you know, embrace that and not to only, you know, create these characters that, you know, Asian is all we are, but these three-dimensional characters that highlight and celebrate the stories that we have to tell, you know? So it's I mean it's we even it's amazing. 
We even brought you into the process because our editor didn't speak Mandarin. And so we brought Kara into the process.